So I have just turned up at a 10 day silent meditation retreat. No books, no reading materials, no writing materials, no technology, nothing. I'm just about to go in. I'm a little bit nervous and um, wondering to myself, why on earth am I doing this? And I think part of it is because I'd quite like to see what it's like to sit with myself for 10 days, just me and my own mind and get to know what is actually in there. I've got no idea. With no distractions, nothing going on, it will be really interesting to see how I come out the other end. And then another part of me just really likes a challenge. I've challenged my body over the years with my personal training, obviously trying to go faster, go further with cardiovascular stuff, challenge myself with muscular stuff. So I've tried to get stronger, get more flexible. And this, I think, is probably going to be my biggest challenge, challenging my mind. Can I actually stay silent? I struggle to stay silent for 10 minutes. Can I actually stay silent for 10 whole days? And what a challenge that is going to be to just find out what's up here and sit comfortably with it. Anyway, I'll let you know how I go at the end. So day one, I'm going to have to preface this with the fact that just before I entered the 10 day course, I spent my neck started to spasm. So it locked up and it spasmed and the physio said the worst thing I could do was sit still. Um, best thing is movement. So of course that's not going to happen. So day one, we get there. Um, it is very nerve wracking. We're all having to stay silent. No eye contact, no hand gestures, no smiling. So no contact whatsoever with the other participants. So day one, we sit down in the hall and we have to focus just on our breathing in this triangle area here. So we sit down and we have to try and find a comfortable position. I've got my little meditation stool and I'm sitting on that. And you're allowed to shift and move a fraction. You're not allowed to shift and move too much. So you're allowed to move a little bit. So I'm in the hall and I am shifting quite a bit because my neck is so sore. And the teacher calls me in at lunchtime and says, how are you doing? And I said, I'm in agony. So he said, look, try and stay stiller if you can. I said, I don't know if that's going to be possible. Um, so as the day progresses, it gets worse and worse and worse. So I am in a whole world of pain. And... That is day one, absolute agony. By the end of it, I am walking around thinking there is no way that I am gonna be able to stick this out for 10 days. I think I'm gonna to have to leave tomorrow. So day one done. And um, really, I couldn't focus on my breathing that much because all I could focus on was the pain in my neck, not the breath going through. There was 11 hours of meditation a day. So 11 hours of sitting still a day, it was in hence. Day one done, day two tomorrow. Day two is a combination of anger and tears. So I do my two hours of meditation on my little meditation stool sitting bolt upright and I can't focus on anything but my neck. It's giving me real grief. So at this point I'm getting angry with myself because I think I'm going to have to quit. I don't see the point of staying if I can't actually do any of the meditations if I'm just spending my whole time thinking about my neck. I'm also a little bit angry because I've been told that I can't lie down and I know that if I could, then I could actually start working on the meditation and focusing on the breathing. And I get that there's certain pain that you can work through, like my hips are sore, my knees are sore, my feet are sore, but that really doesn't bother me. Like I know that that is temporary pain that I can, once I stand up, it's gonna go. But this neck issue is really giving me grief. So I think I'm going to have to go. Anyway, by the time I get to lunch, I have stacked up heaps of cushions in front of me. And in meditation, this is my pose. I'm on all fours, literally. I'm just hanging out, just trying to alleviate the pain. And it's just not working. So Jerry calls me in at lunch and says, this clearly isn't working out for you. 
uh, how about you sit on the back wall? And I was so relieved. <laughs> I started to cry. I was like, oh, that would be great. <laughs> So then the afternoon, I really got a sense of what was meant to be happening. So I've got to focus on my nose, on the breath going in, and it was so focused that I started to feel as if just one spot on the inside of my nose was almost raw with the, the breath that was coming in. So that's what I felt. It was, it was so, so intense. So quite pleased, um, we're going well managed to stay I did think day two I was gonna go like I seriously thought I was I was gone so fingers crossed the back wall is for me and we can start actually focusing on what I'm here for day three still angry god I'm an angry person I had no idea <laughs> so I wake up, I'm still in a bit of pain even though I'm having to sit down, but previously, the night before, basically we get um, the teacher saying, here is Janet, she's going to be the manager of the women's dorm area and she's going to make sure that you don't sleep in the morning. So again, I'm set into this like, Jesus, we've come here of our own accord. We wanted to come here. Of course, we're going to be getting up. To, to do the benefit of this like we don't need to be checked up on like children so again I'm really annoyed and then I start to think like who is this guy anyway that's teaching us he's not built any kind of rapport with us whatsoever he just introduced himself as Jerry your assistant teacher that was it nothing about his experience how long he's been doing this how long he's been a meditator how long he's been a teacher nothing so I start thinking to myself why am I getting so annoyed with this guy and I realize it's because I'm not very good with people in authority that I don't have respect or rapport for. So um, that was what I figured out that day. It took me all day to realize why I was getting so antsy because I was telling myself these stories that he was checking up on us. He didn't believe that I was actually lying down and meditating. He thought I was lying down and going back to bed. Um, and I was meditating on the floor to try and alleviate my neck pain. So it was a, it was a strange one. I was angry most of the day <laughs> and at him. Um, so I had to kind of work through that. And this day in particular, we had to focus just on this area here. So we had to focus just on the sensation underneath our nose. So that was interesting to spend a whole day doing that. So that was day three angry with authority figures that I do not respect or have rapport with. Okay, day four now. And by now I'm starting to think that I should be partially levitating off the ground and super chilled. And it's the absolute opposite. Today I am racked with worry. My mum is about to move house um, from a massive four bedroom um, family home into a tiny bungalow. And I have got so many things that I meant to let her know. So at lunchtime, I go and see Jerry again, my good old friend, and I ask him if I can send a text message out, which of course is not allowed. Thankfully, he can see how worried I am. It's for mum's sake, not for mine. And he actually agrees to send a text message out to my mum. So that was really good. Um, so it's made me realise I actually worry a lot. So this is like a common pattern I've decided. I've spent the last three days worrying. Today I'm super worried um, and I can't get my mum out of my head. But today is Vipassana day. So today we start a different form of meditation where we start to focus on sensations from the top of our head down through our whole body. So we're trying to notice any kind of sensation, whether it's warm, cold, um, whether it is tingling, crawling sensations, itching, pain. So this isn't too bad. Obviously, I'm feeling different sensations. I get to my neck, I'm feeling pain. It's trying to ignore different sensations and not crave the nice sensations, but also not feel averse to the terrible sensations like the pain. So this is quite interesting. We have our first hour where we are not allowed to move a muscle. So we're not allowed to itch if we've got a scratch. We're not allowed to do anything. 
At the end of this session, I thought it was two hours, but at the end, everyone told me it was just one. But at the end of this session, there is a girl crying. She's in so much pain. There is a guy that has practically hyperventilated. He's been like <laughs> trying to work through the pain. It is intense. So that is day four. And I'm really hoping that it's going to start to get easier soon. Mum moves tomorrow. I'm hoping that will all come out of my mind and that a true bliss and calm and peace will hit me soon. So fingers crossed. So I've now made it to day five and I must admit this is the halfway point. So I'm actually starting to feel a bit better. I'm no longer carrying that sort of level of worry about my mum because she's moved already. Um, nothing more I can do. Uh, I've let go of the fact that I'm annoyed with Jerry for um, not sort of introducing himself, not saying who he is, um, for just not having a level of respect or rapport for him, but I've just let go of that. And I now realise that, so today, we're still focusing on the body from top to toe, toe to top. And I realise just how much stuff is in my head. Um, I've just got a monkey mind. My God, I've started to make up stories. Like I started to, to focus, like come off my body and start thinking about, now if I was Naomi Campbell in that movie where the tsunami came in and hit and her husband was Ewan McGregor, what would I do? Would I climb up a tree, but then the tree would fall down and so I'd be surfing the wave on this tree and then the tree would bang into buildings and I'd crush my leg. And then if I put my hand out to stop myself from crushing into buildings, I'd break my wrist. And then how would I get back to my family? Like, and then all of a sudden I'm like, what am I thinking of this for? This is nuts. And then another time I'm there thinking that I've picked up two random people from the airport, don't even know them. I've picked up a guy and his son and the son starts being sick in my car on the way home. And all I'm really worried about is getting the kid out of the car quickly before all the sick starts to sink into my car seat. And obviously the dad's really worried about the kid and I'm really worried about my car seat. And I'm like, what am I thinking? Like, just amazing how much clutter is in the brain. It is incredible. So I'm hoping <laughs> that as the days go on, this, this made up stories, all these movies start leaving my head and I actually get a little bit of peace and clarity. So that was day five, nothing really major happened apart from the fact that I realized how my mind is just full of rubbish. Yay, so day six, I'm starting to feel like I'm a lot calmer. Um, I'm not thinking quite so much and um, there's way less distraction going on in my head. I've started now to sit up rather than sit on the back wall. And it's a little bit like warming up for 10 rounds in the ring with Mike Tyson. So we get into the hall and everyone is sort of like, oh, before stopping and before getting, you know, we're just, oh, doing this, doing the next, just getting ourselves all prepared for having to sit still for an hour. I cannot tell you how difficult that is. Um, so really day six is meant to be one of the hardest days where people struggle, but I'm actually finding it pretty good. Um, I do wish I had a pen and paper, um, because I do still have a bit of a list going on in my head. I also really wanted to document the journey and, um, I was writing in the soil each day and then it rained. So I lost all my little notes. Um, so I'm recording this afterwards just from memory. But you really have so little else to think about when you're in there that you kind of can really remember what's happening from day to day. So day six, pretty good. Um, let's hope it continues this way. Day seven. So we're kind of on the home stretch now. I'm really looking forward to going home. And ever since, uh, oh, probably day five, I have been craving a big juicy steak and a glass of red wine. So that's all I'm looking forward to on Sunday when I get out. I'm just desperate to go out for lunch, big juicy steak, glass of red wine. And so we go to, into the teachings and I think it was last night and they start saying about how cravings cause misery because you crave something, it doesn't happen, you get disappointed. 
uh, or you want things in life, they don't quite work out how you want them and you get disappointed. And also, um, so it's talking about cravings and aversion. So you're not wanting something, so you're wanting to try and avoid something. So this is the whole thing with the pain and pleasure sensations in the body. So aversions, you're trying to avoid something and that can cause misery as well. So it's trying to just be happy within, not trying to crave things that you potentially want or you don't have, and not being really averse to bad negative things that happen because negative things happen all the time. So I'm trying to drop my craving for this steak, but it's not really happening because I am really looking forward to it. Um, but realize, well, what if I turn up to the restaurant and the last steak is sold? What if I turn up and it is overcooked and yucky or the wine's really nasty? Or what if I go home and my husband's like, no, nah, I don't want to go out. And then I'll be really disappointed. So I get the whole craving thing, but it isn't stopping me craving steak. So that's really day seven. I'm still thinking about the body and my sensations and I'm trying not to crave the nice sensations and I'm trying not to be averse to the horrible, painful sensations. I'm just trying to watch things as they go. But that really is day seven, quite uneventful, just me still thinking and craving, um, but getting there a little bit better, still managing to sit, so I'm quite happy. Day eight, I am bored. <laughs> I'm so bored of listening to my mind. I mean, I'm getting better. I'm not listening so much, like I'm managing to do five minutes or so, of body sensations and then I go off on a tangent for like 10 or 15 minutes thinking about steak or uh, movies or my mum's birthday or what I'm going to do when I get home so I am still monkey mind but getting better but I'm really bored now I'm so bored of 11 hours of having my eyes closed and focusing on my body I'm even watching flies crawl up the wall and that's bored um nothing really that eventful just uh, started to actually pack my bag to come home because I'm quite bored. And um, that would be it for day eight. Just bored, wanting to leave, still got a monkey mind, getting better at sitting, not quite so painful. That would be it, day eight over. So day nine is our final day of silence. Tomorrow we can start talking again to everyone else. So. We're, we're there, we're on the home stretch. Again, I'm still really bored. I'm still craving my steak. Um, I'm still monkey minded, but it's slowly getting a little bit better, I think. I'm slowly starting to calm down my mind and focus more on my body. And I get it, I get that whole thing of, if you're normally say, let's just say you get carried away with anger or anxiety. The whole point of this is to focus on what bodily sensations are caused, what biochemical reaction happens when you get angry or anxious and to notice it before it takes hold and takes over you. So this is the whole sort of premise of the 10 days is to really start to become aware of your bodily sensations, not crave good sensations, not be averse to bad sensations, but just sit with it and just watch it and watch it change because everything changes. So it's trying to make you aware of your sensations from what happens in your mind, not getting attached to them, and then not obviously letting things escalate and run away from you. So if you're an anxious person, it's becoming aware that you know maybe your chest is tightening or your face is going red and that could be for an angry person as well, or your fists are clenched or whatever it may be. And then just, Acknowledging that, going, ah, you know, this is this pattern again. My chest is tightening, my hands are clenching, my face is getting hot. And just going, okay, this is anger, anxiety, whatever it may be. And just being able to sit with it and not getting too averse, too attached, too into that sensation. So that is kind of the whole point of this 10 day meditation. And I am starting to be more aware of sensation, but I think it's going to take years. Imagine getting in a situation where you're annoyed with someone and just ignoring it. I think it's very similar to if you're um, in a car, say road rage. I'm, I'm not particularly bothered by road rage. Like if someone cuts me up, they're an idiot and that's it. And I just carry on listening to my music and that's my day. 
But some people, oh my God, if they get cut up, they're going to be swearing. They're going to be going bright red. They're going to be raw. They're wanting to kill the person at the traffic lights when they stop. And that's the same situation, but different reactions. So it's training yourself to react differently and not be so caught up in situations. So that's what I'm learning. Day nine, a bit bored, but getting there. Day 11, yes, we get to go home. We do two hours of meditation in the morning. We have a group brekkie. We say thanks to everyone that's helped out and goodbye to everyone. And we get on our merry little way. Jerry, the teacher, is nowhere to be seen, so we can't say thank you to him. Um, but anyway, we hop off and I am really looking forward to my lunch of steak and wine um, and realise that craving causes misery. So um, off we hop on our way and then smoke starts coming out the back tire. So I've got heaps of people in the boot of my car that I'm taking home. And um, yeah, we have to Google because I cannot find a mobile mechanic on a Sunday that can help me fix this. And I'm miles away from home. So anyway, um, go forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and it releases the handbrake. And that's what caused all the smoke. Um, but I did have to laugh because I just had to tell everyone. I was like, this is because I've been craving steak all week. It's not meant to be. I'm meant to be taught a lesson and I'm not going to get my steak and the craving does cause misery because you look forward to something so much. You've got this huge high expectation and it doesn't happen. But anyway, that was the final day when we finally got to leave. My summary of my 10 day silent meditation retreat would be varied actually um i think look it was a really good experience i personally think that on the website there should be a training program <laughs> on how to sit for 10 flipping hours well it was more like 11 but how to sit still for that amount of time so i actually think like a marathon you wouldn't just run a marathon you'd run a mile and then you'd run five and then you'd run eight and then you'd run ten same deal i think you should have a certain level of sitting experience <laughs> before going on this meditation so my recommendation for anyone that's going to go on one make sure you can sit perfectly still and comfortably 
And to do that, I would start off with say 20 minutes a week and then 30 minutes a week and then 40 minutes and then 50 and build up to, to a minute. So that is what I would recommend. So that would be um, my definite recommendation for newbies. Um, probably don't go when something major is happening in your life, like my mum moving house that sort of tended to occupy my mind quite a lot. So I was quite concerned, quite worried. So I didn't really get to relax for about the first four or five days. So I would recommend don't go if something major is happening during that time frame when you're gone. Um, I loved the teachings. You can actually get the teachings online on YouTube. Go Anchor is the teacher. And I'm going to rewatch those um, over the next um, sort of 10 days, I think. And um, I have fallen off the bandwagon. I came back after my 10 days and I've done one hour of meditation and we're probably about 10 days later. I think the reason being is that they recommend that you do two hours of meditation a day, morning, an hour, night, a night, an hour. Now, I don't really have that time, but then that's an excuse because you could always find the time, right? If it's that important to you, you just get up an hour earlier or you wouldn't watch TV or read a book in the evening. You do an hour of meditation. I think personally, two hours a day is overkill for me. I would much rather be taking my dog for a walk, doing a workout. So the fact it was two hours actually really put me off doing anything at all because I felt that if I wasn't doing an hour sitting in a go, then I shouldn't be doing it at all. So um, I actually started to take my own advice, which I give my clients, which is do what's going to be achievable to you because then you're more likely to do it. So I've started off again, but I'm doing much shorter sessions. I'm just doing them when I feel that I can and when I've got the time and I am trying to fit it in first thing in the morning because that's the best time of the day for me to focus and to concentrate. And it also sets me up well for the rest of the week, for the rest of the day rather. So I think I'm going to start doing more 20 minute sessions and I'm hoping that in time that will just expand. I'll be able to do 30 and then I'll be able to do 40 and then I'll feel more comfortable doing 50. Um, it hasn't really changed me that I have noticed so far. I have noticed that words are so important. That's one thing I noticed. There was the day when I went in and said that the hall was a bit stinky. Could we open the doors? And that afternoon, all the girls had their, their jumpers on the line and they obviously thought that I meant them. Oh, I felt so bad. I could have just said, can you open the doors for fresh air? But I said no, because it's stinky. So it's made me realize that the words we choose can be quite important. Um, and you don't need to use many words, although I am a bit of a chatterbox, but you don't need to use many. So it would be interesting in another month's time to see how this has changed me, how this has affected me, how it's influenced my life.